becoming a student of my children and teaching the way they learn, not the way I want to teach. So, Abby, it's so important that we adjust our parenting and our teaching to fit the child. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with Abinella. So excited to have you back with me, Abby. Hi. I'm excited to be here. Hi. I I always love co-hosting with you. It's Um, one of my favorite things. It is. It is. We have so much fun doing this together. And typically, as you guys know, Abby and I have been doing Q&As every, I don't know, like month, month and a half, we've been doing these Q&A episodes, which are really, really fun. But this time we have a really special Q&A for you. We are with Connie Albers. She's been on the podcast a couple of times and Connie is a veteran homeschool mom. Abby and I are not yet veteran homeschool moms. We're, we're still kind of in the thick of it. We're still learning some of these things as we go. We oftentimes have wisdom and experience to share, but we haven't gotten our kids to the very end of our homeschool journey yet. And so we have have Connie with us today and she has graduated five kids from her homeschool. And so we're going to talk to her today about uh, all things homeschool from the perspective of a veteran homeschool mom. So Connie, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Yvette. And I love how you've nicknamed Abby to Abinella. I just think that's pretty fun. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Thanks for having Uh, me back. Yes, of course. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, As we were talking about this episode and thinking through it, you know, there are so many questions that are constantly being asked of Abby and I, of, you know, just your, your typical homeschool mom. And we really, really wanted to just get the wisdom of someone who's been there and done that and done it successfully. And I so appreciate you and your family and the experience that you have. So very quickly, if you can introduce us to your family, how many kids you have and how long you homeschooled, and then we'll just start digging into questions. That would be great. Okay, so I am the mother of five, and we homeschooled all of them from kindergarten through high school and just turned the tassel, and they all went on to college. Um, Our journey lasted actually physically homeschooling from kindergarten for 21 years. But now when you ask somebody when they're homeschooling, they say like from birth. So (laughs) I don't know. I've been involved with the homeschool movement in various forms for the last 30 years. And it's it's wonderful. It's it's pretty cool. You yeah. are one of those pioneers that we all look up to and look <laughs> look back on. That's amazing. Hey, Abby, truthfully, I just wanted to make sure as I was going through the process that the freedoms that we enjoyed uh, are also freedoms that you will enjoy. So we pushed hard in all 50 states to kind of make that possible. And, you know, it's it's always in danger and it's something we've got to stay on top of because Thank there's you. a lot of people that don't like that people, parents are homeschooling, especially 40% of the country right now. Right? You're right. And there's a lot of people that don't understand what it took to be able to, to have our homeschool freedom. So thank you on behalf of all of us for for staying the course and fighting for our freedom so that we can do it now. Yeah, yeah, my son is done with therapy after the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, has gone with him at the library, <laughs> ready to file charges on truancy. It's crazy stuff. Oh, but now different God. charges are being filed. So, yeah, yeah. it oh, is good. fun. It's fun to have that story. Yeah. Yeah. What year did you start homeschooling? Oh, no, I have no idea. I don't know. So as I've been involved with the movement 30 years and we're in 2020. So there you go. <laughs> wow. 90. <laughs> I can do that simple math. Yeah, mm-hmm. 90. That oh yeah. gosh. Oh man. Oh yeah, that's that's, that's a long time. But so, I was really young when I started, you know, like <laughs> Well, you're still really young. Really well. I mean, if people look at this, you know, watch this video, they're going to be like, "What, Connie? She been homeschooling for 30 years or and the schooling was good." Years? Yeah, oil of Olay, right? That's what you use. <laughs> Keeps you young. Keeps you young forever. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, let's jump into these questions. So, my first question for you is if you could talk to your younger self, what would you say? What advice would you give to you as a new homeschool mom? That's awesome. I actually wrote an article about the 10 things I would tell my younger self. The most important thing I would tell my younger self is um, cut yourself some some grace and some slack because I wanted to get it all done perfectly, meticulously, high achiever. And I would, it's, wouldn't that, I would not say chill out, 
because that kind of gives the wrong impression. But I would re- just remind myself, you got a lot of years to get all of this in and don't sweat if you didn't get that history done this week or for two weeks, there's time to catch up. Yeah. Love it. Now, when you say that there's time to catch up, I recently did an episode um, with Nikki Truesdell and she, I, I love, she talked about how anyone can homeschool. And I love that she really kind of focused for part of the episode on, you don't have to teach everything every year and kids can learn a whole lot within a few short years. We tend to think, you know, we have to teach them science every single year of school and we have to teach them history every single year of school. Um, and that's not necessarily true. Did you find that to be true in your family with your kids? Yeah, because in the course of life, you have uh, shortfalls, you have financial setbacks, you have illness. Like I had late stage Lyme disease where I was bedridden. Uh, There wasn't a lot of school going on. I thought there would be, but when you can't dress or feed yourself, there's not a lot of other things you can do except, you know, do the next thing, which is nothing for me. It was just kind of keeping calm in the house. Um, you got to remember there's like, for example, American history is is really taught four separate times. You you teach your state history and some form of American history in elementary, and then you're doing it again in middle school, and then you're doing American history again in high school, and then you're doing a half a semester of American government. Mm-hmm. So y- you can, it just builds on itself. And in the natural course of teaching your children, like right now, you can teach decades of American history right now within the last two months because of what's going on in our climate. Kids are getting a civic lesson. They're getting with the (laughs) Supreme Court nominee. They're getting everything. And as long as you just stop long enough to listen and have discussions and think about what did we just cover, you could mark down in your, like, however you create your transcripts for high school. Mm -hmm. Man, you can write down tons of assignments that were credit that you get credit for and you can get a whole half a semester credit just from the last two months. Right. Right. Oh, for sure. Okay. Can we go back? You said something about you homeschooled five children with Lyme's disease. So I hear so many moms talk about, well, you know, it's easy for that mom to homeschool because of A, B, and C, but, um, you know, I have obstacles or challenges or there's these situations where I can't. And clearly with your story, that's not the case. Will you, will you talk a little bit about homeschooling when there's other things going on? Yeah, Abby, my kids are, are five kids in seven years. So that's a lot of kids come back. So I didn't have a lot of spread there. Um, yeah, I I was bedridden. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't dress. I couldn't read. I thought, oh, I'll just read aloud. Well, the problem was I couldn't read because it, it impacted my neurological function um, from the Lyme's disease. And it took two years for me to, uh, one, get diagnosed. And then thankfully I did recover. But then I took a whole another year and a half just to like detox my whole body. Um, And there were other things with caring for elderly parents while we were homeschooling Mm -hmm. and some other um, like learning issues we had with one of our children where uh, when you have a large family like this, sometimes you have natural learners and then you have children that struggle. And when that happens, it can set, it can just create an atmosphere in the home that can be tense. But the beautiful thing is that God restores what the locusts have eaten. So when you have a learning, when you have a child that has learning struggles or you have a health struggle or you have a a death, loss, grief, uh, disruption like we're having right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, my heart, Abby, hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm fielding hundreds of questions from young moms about the weight of it all. They just Mm -hmm. feel the weight and they're not staying focused and they're having a hard time staying focused. And I'm just like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Bring them close. Talk to them about what's going on. Point them to the Lord. Remind them that this did not catch God by surprise, whether it's the pandemic or whether it's the presidential election or whether it's mask mandates, whatever it is, you have the opportunity to tailor a education that fits that child. And that's why, Yvette, going back to your question, that's why it doesn't take 16 hours a day to do it. Right. It can take just a couple of hours that are intentional depending on like the giftings of that child, how they learn. And there again, that goes to, do you know your child and how they learn? And are you crafting an education and a way of teaching so that they learn what you're saying instead of trying to ramrod something that actually isn't working? Right, right. So great. Um, Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in just a minute. 
I think as parents, we assume that kids are going to just know the right way to do things. You have to teach them first and then train them by teaching them to do it over and over again until they actually get it. Imagine trying to teach your child how to tie his shoes without the practice principle. If the practice principle is vital for teaching such morally neutral tasks as mm-hmm. tying shoes, how much more important is it for training children in Christ-like character? I speak to parents all the time who come up to me and they see what's happening, but they don't know what to do. And I just want to stand up and say, you can do this. Here is a solution. This is Yvette Hampton, host of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Join us each week for a new episode as we offer encouragement and resources on biblical discipleship from popular speakers and authors, as well as parents just like you and me. Find out more at schoolhouserocked.com or listen anywhere you find your favorite podcast. We are back with Connie and uh, just so excited to be able to talk to you and just glean this wisdom from you. Abby, I think you've got the next question on your end. What do you? I do. And I'm I'm just rapidly taking notes because things that I've heard that have really hit me is you said the word listen and stop ramrodding these certain things into our kids. And man, I think that that's something that new homeschool moms or young homeschool moms, we forget. We forget to just take a breath and listen to our kid, to get to know our kid, to, to listen to God as he guides us in this. So Thank you. I'm, I'm rapidly taking notes. Okay, so my question is, what is the single most important decision you made in regards to parenting or homeschooling? Becoming a student of my children and teaching the way they learn, not the way I want to teach. So, Abby, it's so important that we adjust our parenting and our teaching to fit the child. Um, with five kids, oftentimes we think, or if you have a lot of kids, even two, like Yvette with your daughters, if you taught this, your, you know, Brooklyn the same way you teach your other daughter, you could end up with a lot of struggles and frustrations because right. they're different. Right. Um, and so like in my book, Parenting Beyond the Rules, the front of the book cover, Abby, has a paint swash, a paint swath with paintbrushes because every child is unique. So the mm-hmm. best thing for me was when I stopped in the hallway one day when it just was wasn't going well. I was I was having the meltdown. The kids were fine, um, but they were driving me crazy. And I just stomped and I just asked the Lord to please help me love my children in the way that they receive mm. it the best. And I created this little notebook called Albers in Action. And I started writing down everything that I noticed about my children, the children that had to be right, the children that had to be competitive, the children that, oh, here, I'll give you half of my sandwich because I know you're still hungry. You know, all those little subtle things that you have an opportunity to pick up on, the 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 visual cues, I call it the silent language where, you know, it's just the, yeah, I know. Yeah, I heard, mom, you already said that. <laughs> yeah. You know, y'all. Okay, mom. Fine. Can we just be done? Would you please make them stop talking so we can finish this read aloud? Oh, you make us feel so normal listening to you. Thank you. It's just, but that is, it's so important uh, that we do do that. Um, the goal is, is what will the, what will the conversations be like? Yvette, you and I've talked about this before. What will the conversations be like when you don't have to do school? Right. Um, And I just want to elaborate on that specific point because I had a mama of eight call me yesterday and we probably spent two hours on the phone and she was just talking about she's got older kids and little kids and trying to keep them aware and trying to spend time with each one of them. And and she just said to me, she said, just tell me, are they going to resent all of this family time? Are they going to resent that it was it was kind of like friends were on the peripheral, but family was the most important? And I'm like, no. They're not, not, not because you don't have friends, but because when the chips are down and life is hard, who shows up? I mean, maybe a friend, maybe for a little bit, but then like, who's going to be there for the long haul? And that's, that's the family. And my kids will hold each other accountable. I don't have to do it anymore. You know, if one starts going off the rails, the other one's like calling the other sibs saying, Hey, what do we, we need an intervention over here. What do we need to do? That's the beautiful part. Get that, get that vision in your mind of where you're going to be when your kids are in, you know, 20, 25, 30. And it seems so far off, but it really isn't. Yeah, no, it's not. It's shocking how quickly time is going. Uh, Brooklyn's going to be 15 in just a few weeks. And I'm just like, how is this even happening? How is, how is she almost 15 years old, you know, she was just born yesterday and it's so shocking how quickly it goes. And people tell you 
when they're born, you know, enjoy them when they're young. It's going to go by so fast. They're going to be grown before you know it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, I'm living that right now. Um, and you know, yeah, and you it. know what? I never tell people that. You know why? Because I didn't listen before. No, <laughs> I'm like, no. but you don't understand how right. hard my days are. <laughs> right. You don't understand it until it starts <laughs> happening. Till they start, uh, you just don't like mouth yeah. off or you no. know. It's it's crossing it's their tra- arms. I'm sure your kids never do that. No, right? I never do. I have mind it. Sure, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, fine. It's true. Right. <laughs> they do. You, you talked about understanding their learning styles, and it's it's yeah. funny that you talk about that because just a few weeks ago, Abby and I did an episode on ten steps to homeschooling. Um, with excellence. And one of the steps was that we need to understand our children. We need to understand their learning style. We need to understand our teaching style. Um, But when we really understand our kids and how they learn, what makes them tick, what makes them frustrated, what doesn't, it really is such an important part of homeschooling because it's not just about the academics. It's about building that relationship. And if, if we are constantly trying to make them learn the way we learn or the way we think they should learn, which is what happens in the traditional school setting, it can just cause so much frustration in them and build a real barrier between us and them. And, um, and really it's a lost opportunity to be able to build that relationship with them. So I love that you talk about that. Um, Okay. I want to talk kind of on that topic of education and academics. One of the questions, well, I don't know that it's a question, but statements that we hear oftentimes for not homeschooling is is people will say, well, I'm not an expert. I'm not a teacher. I was not a trained educator. I didn't go to college. I'm not an expert in math. I'm not an expert in science or English. So how could I possibly teach these things to my children when I have no expertise in those? So you, again, you took your kids from kindergarten through 12th grade, all five of them, five kids born within seven years of each other. How did you homeschool multiple kids all the way through graduation and into college when you were, you you couldn't have been an expert in every single subject that they learned? I faked it. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, that's a great question because all of the kids, God just uses ill-equipped parents to Mm -hmm. complete his work and to, to, fulfill the calling that he has for his kids, you know, which he, uh, he gives you, they're on loan. We don't get to own them. They're just, right. we get to teach, shape, form, and mold them. Um, but all five of the kids went on to college on, and this is the part that I, I'm so humbled by when I think about it, they all went on academic scholarship, even mm. my struggling learners who, who the teacher, I had a co-op teacher for English, um, and I asked her for a letter of recommendation and Abby, she said, she sent me a letter and you know what the letter was? Uh, your, your son's not college material. So oh, wow. you should look for a Votech place because he just won't cut it in college. Wow. And you know, that's like the wrong thing oh. to say to a mom, right? <laughs> Especially, <laughs> Especially a home home mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, Oh yeah, well, thank you very much. And by golly, we worked our tails off, but he got an academic scholarship and it, wow. it really boosted his confidence. But Yvette, to your point, when we when we realize that God has given you an assignment today, and I think there's a real balance between let's have that relationship because it's oh so important, but so is their education because you do want them to move out one day and be able to like support themselves and a family and make you know so, you know fill their role in society. So there is a there is a fine line, and I I don't want parents to go one way or the other where it's all about academics and then you lose the heart of your child because you're filling in all these subjects like calculus, which I didn't know. And then you're focusing so much on the relationship that all you do is, you know, have fun. You let them (laughs) down. It's not that you let them down, but that you don't help push them to their, um, a level of excellence sure. because learning is hard. Teaching, learning is hard because what are you doing? You're learning stuff you don't know. So if right. it was easy, you wouldn't need to, you know, learn to anything because right. you would know it all, but you don't. But, uh, but event, I just have to say, I didn't know physics and I didn't know calculus. And I had a son who I knew was going into the engineering field. What was my choice? I, well, there's amazing resources out there. Mm-hmm. I did physics and I, you know, did a way of doing that. We don't have time for that, but God makes a way 
to do what he needs you to do to get his children prepared for the next chapter of their life. And if you get up every morning and you just ask the Lord, God, what's my assignment for today? Uh, you show up and you do it and you trust God. And then you go to bed at night and you, you're worried and you're fretful thinking, I didn't do enough. I probably should have done more. I should have done two pages of math. We should have read three chapters in our read aloud. Oh man, we didn't do science today. Now we're three days behind. If you just, when you go to bed at night, just remind yourself of this truth. They're God's children. He wants you to be faithful. And if all you do is break up arguments all day long and you read one chapter in a chapter book and they get fed three meals and a couple snacks and you've harvest, you've really taught them the love of learning, God is going to use that. Mm -hmm. Love it. Did I answer that's your question? Good. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely did. I think that's a, a fantastic answer. Um, we are out of time um, for this episode. Let's come back on Wednesday because we've got more questions um, to have you answer. Thank you so much, Connie. Really quickly, you mentioned your book. Um, yeah. Tell us about your book and where people can find out more about it. Yes, you can find it at ConnieAubers.com. You can find it anywhere books are sold. It is. It looks like this, the paintbrushes and the paint swath, Parenting Beyond the Rules, Raising Teens with Confidence and Joy. Great. And we actually did an episode about that uh, quite some time ago, a little over a year ago. So we will all link to that. Um, and that's all about um, parenting. It's a fantastic book. So I'll put the link to that if you guys want to go back and listen to that in case you missed it. So thank you for joining us today. Come back on Wednesday and we will continue on ta our conversation with Connie Albers talking about parenting and homeschooling from a veteran homeschool mama. Thank you guys. Have a great afternoon. Bye.